morning, students of BA25 Human Resource Management. Hope you are doing well right now and everything is going smooth in your online learning. Okay. Today, we will be discussing job organization and information. So this function of human resource management involves job analysis, job design, and job evaluation. Okay. So in, in our previous discussion, we were able to discuss what is human resource management, the different functions of human resource management, the, uh, the structure of human resource department in small, medium, and large organizations. And also we discussed the line, staff, and coordinative function of human resource management. Okay, so today we will be discussing job analysis, job design, job evaluation, and how does these three terms, if combined together, will form job organization and information. Okay, so when we uh, say job organization and information, this is the analysis and evaluation of each job that exists within the organization. It is a detailed and organized systematic study of jobs. Okay? So, meron din palang na study of jobs na natawag, which is yung job organization and information. Okay, so we will be analyzing, evaluating the, the different jobs that exist within the organization. Okay, so in this... Uh, job organization and information model we have here three steps okay one two three the first step is we have here the job analysis okay we're in meron siyang dalawang main output which is job description and job specification then afterwards after uh, creating and analyzing jobs and uh, producing these two outputs job description and specification next would be job design and after job design we have here job evaluation and along the process there must be feedback okay makikita mo yung pabalik na araw di ba pag anon Kanina. And then we have here na yung uh, arrow na pointed to the left. Okay? So, this is a process. Ibig sabihin yan, it's a process. It's an ongoing process. Hindi ito matapos-tapos. An ending process. So, after job evaluation, uh, based on what we evaluated, we could provide some feedback to enhance uh, this process, to improve some of the process here in job design and even uh, changing some of the aspects in job analysis. Okay, so let's discuss the first uh, step which is job analysis. So we have here now the definition of job analysis. Okay. According to the according to authors of human resource management, the most basic building block of HR management is job analysis. Building block. So, para ito yung pinaka foundation ng lahat ng mga HR functions. Okay. So, ibig sabi niyan most of the functions of human resource management will use will somehow use job analysis or the outputs in job analysis so how do we define job analysis this is a systematic way to gather and analyze information about the content and human requirement of jobs and the context in which jobs are performed 
So, nakita mo doon, yung systematic way. So, ibig sabihin, there is a process, there is a procedure, there is a proper step to follow so that you will be able to gather and analyze information. Okay? So, parang science din yan, di ba? Meron din uh, sa science, yung mga different studies, just for example, biology, sociology, physics, okay? So, all of these things follow some form of systems and scientific systems and procedures. And also, in the study of jobs, there is a systematic way to gather and analyze different information pertaining to the content of the job, meaning yung mga uh, work activities and behaviors and also yung mga tinatawag natin na uh, duties and responsibilities. And also, in job analysis, you will determine and analyze also what are the human requirements of the job. So, ibig sabihin, ano yung mga knowledge, skills, abilities needed to satisfactorily perform the job. Okay. And even the context, as you can see in here, the word context. Okay. Ito yung context. Ito yung context means the environment. Okay. The working conditions. The machines and equipment to be used. Okay. Supervisions given and received. So, ito yung mga component ngayon na ng uh, job analysis. Ito yung mga ini-study ini dito, ina-analyze what are the work activities and behaviors to be performed. Okay? They will also determine the level of interaction with others. Okay? Performance standards will be set. Okay? Financial and budgeting impact. Machines and equipment use. Working conditions. Supervision given and received knowledge, skills, and abilities needed. And to give us a better picture of the job analysis process and what are the information that is being gathered and analyzed in job analysis, let us uh, look into this job analysis matrix. Okay. So in the upper left window, or pain. So we have here the statement what the worker does. Okay, so ito yung unang-unang in-study or ginagather, in-analyze sa job analysis. So number one, what the worker does. Ano yung mga duties, tasks, and responsibilities of that certain job. Number two, the second, uh, the, the second window in here, how the worker does it. How the worker does the duties, tasks, and responsibilities. So, ibig sabihin, ano ba yung mga gagamitin niyang mga methods, tools, and techniques para ma-perform niya yung mga duties, tasks, and responsibilities. The third uh, window we have here, the worker qualifications. Hmm. So, kanina, we talk about yung mga duties, tasks, and responsibilities, and also the methods, tools, and techniques para ma-perform itong mga duties, tasks, and responsibilities. Now, we have to determine also, ano ba yung mga kinakailangan niyang skills, knowledge, and abilities and what are the physical demands that is being used or required to operate or to follow the different methods, tools, and techniques para magawa niya ng maayos yung duties, tasks, and responsibilities dun sa job na yan. Okay? So, merong kang dapat na iset na qualifications. Okay. Hindi lang um, kung sino-sino ang pwedeng magtrabaho na lang sa isang job or mag-perform sa isang job. Okay? Kasi nga, di ba, ang mga tao meron namang iba't ibang level of skills, knowledge, and abilities. So, it is fitting 
for organization to create criteria to create qualifications okay, in order for them to uh, properly decide kung sino yung mga tao na makakapag-perform ng trabaho. Okay. And then lastly, yung why the worker does it. It is important for organizations to create a job that has value or that will help in the achievement of the goals of the organization. Kasi kung yung trabaho na hindi nakakatulong in the production of products and services, so what's the use? Anong silbi ng trabaho na yan? Diba? Ibig sabihin, pag yan, walang connection or hindi makita yung relevance in the production of or in the operations in the productions of your goods and services anong silbi ng trabaho na yan nagsasayang ka lang ng pera ng resources so tanggalin mo na lang kung walang connection so organization should see to it that every job okay yung mga trabaho inside the organization has connection okay or it adds value sa final end ng organization na mayroong it adds value to the creation of your products and services. Okay. So imagine kung yung isang trabaho walang connection dito, hindi nakakatulong sa pag-create ng product and services, what's the use? Okay. And even for workers, pag hindi nila makita yung connection ng kanilang trabaho doon sa overall uh, production ng organization, or operation ng organization, they will also ask themselves, what's the point of working? Okay, what's the point of being part of your organization? Okay, wala na palang importansya itong ginagawa kong trabaho <coughs> para sa organization. Okay, so these are the things that, be, that are being considered in job analysis. So, job analysis is usually undertaken when organization is starting operations. Okay? So, yeah. Siyempre, kapag nag start ka pala ng operation, you have to decide ano ba yung mga trabaho, ano ba yung mga jobs, yung mga positions involved in in this uh, business operation. So, you have to undergo or you have to conduct job analysis to determine what are the duties and responsibilities what are the methods, tools, and techniques to be used to perform the duties, tasks, and responsibilities? What are the qualifications? And what is the purpose of this job to the achievement of the goals of the organization? So, yun, kapag nag-start ka, kapag nag-introduce ka ng uh, bagong trabaho, a new job is created, pag nag-change ka, okay, ng uh, trabaho ibig sabihin that there is a change in the duties tasks and responsibilities there is a change in the methods okay there is a change in the qualification or requirements the knowledge and skills needed there is a change also in the physical demands so you have to conduct job analysis if there are also technology introduction of course Diba? Kasi yung sa tools, methods na gagamitin, okay? mag-iiba rin, okay? mag-change din. Yung kanyang uh, methods in performing the duties and responsibilities. Okay? And even restructuring, okay? ibig sabihin niya na mag-iiba kayo ng organizational structure or yung dalawang department will be combined into a single department and uh, some of the jobs there will be now uh, be done by a single person mm. so mag, mag change yung kanyang duties tasks and responsibilities so those are some of the events that could uh, uh, use job analysis process Okay, in job analysis, you will be conducting also work analysis. 
wherein you will study the workflow, activities, context, and output of a job. Ito yung mas uh, detailed level of job analysis, which is task-based. Task-based job analysis is, an, uh, is analyzing jobs based upon what is done on the job focuses on the task duties and responsibilities performed in a job. So let, let us try to differentiate this three uh, components of task-based analysis. Task duties and job responsibilities. A task is a distinct, identifiable work activity composed, composed of motions. Task. A task is a distinct, identifiable work activity composed of motions. Duty. It is a larger work segment composed of several tasks that are performed by an individual. And then job responsibilities are obligations to perform certain tasks and duties. As you can see in the level of these uh, three terms here, okay, ang task is ito yung distinct, identifiable work activity. So, ito yung mga specific things na activities na ginagawa ng isang ng isang worker, ng isang individual inside the organization. <clears throat> so, for example, sa teaching, preparing instructional materials, that is an identifiable work activity. Another example is conducting classes. Okay? And then Another activity is recording grades, checking papers, checking assignments or outputs of students. Those are tasks that when combined together, they become duty. <clears throat> they become a duty. So composed of several tasks that are performed by an individual. And when you combine tasks and duty, it becomes a job responsibility. So, ibig sabihin yan, kapag responsibility, you are now obligated to perform this task and duties doon sa isang job na yan, doon sa isang position na yan, sa isang trabaho na yan. Okay, nag-gets natin. So, again, so these are the different specific tasks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When all these tasks have been combined, combined, this becomes your duties, okay? And you are now responsible to perform these duties, okay? So, obligated ka na na gawin itong mga to, itong duties and responsibilities na yan. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, a short, uh, or Okay, so this is a diagram on the decisions that that, that is going to be uh, performed in the job analysis process. So we have here the methods of job analysis. We will be analyzing jobs through questionnaires, interviews, observations, diaries, and logs. Okay. And the data Samo ko ninyo mga data pertaining to the job, okay? You will get it from the employees itself, supervisors and managers. Okay. So sino ba ang nagko-conduct ng job analysis? It is the HR specialists, outside consultants, supervisors or managers. Okay, so kinukuha nila yung mga data pertaining to the job. Okay? sa mga employees, supervisors, managers, okay, they could choose from the following methods or they could also combine methods, okay, and then this uh, uh, process of gathering data or analyzing data, gagamitin ngayon ng mga, eto mga HR specialists, consultants and supervisors to prepare job descriptions and specifications and then to be reviewed by the HR specialists 
managers, supervisors, and employees para ma-determine if accurate ba yung mga pre-prepare na HR specialist ng mga ito, ng mga taong ito. <clears throat> So, typical job analysis responsibilities of the HR unit and the managers. Uh, Palagi ko kung sinasabi sa inyo na itong <coughs> HR management, okay, it's really a partnership or a function of the HR department and line managers. So, yung sa HR unit, ito yung mga ginagawa nila. They prepare and coordinate job analysis procedures write job description specification for review, revise periodically reviews job and job description and specifications, reviews managerial input to ensure accuracy, and they may seek also assistance from outside expert for difficult or unusual analysis. <clears throat> Managers will, ito namang gagawin niya, complete or assist in completing job analysis information, review and maintain accuracy of job description and job specifications, may request new job analysis kapag mayroong mga changes na nangyayari dun sa trabaho and even the organization, and identify the performance standards based on job analysis information. Okay, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina that job analysis is the basic building block of all HR activities. Makikita mo sa ating diagram here, Ito yung basic building block, job analysis, job description, job specification. <clears throat> so we have here, first is HR planning. Ano ba ang human resource planning? So we will be discussing this in, uh, so we will be discussing HR planning in the next, uh, next topic. But let me tell you what is HR planning. Okay. <clears throat> okay. HR planning is making it sure that the organization has the right number of people okay, and also the right kind of people okay, at the right time and being placed in the right place okay, so hr planning it's, it's more of forecasting yung human record human resource requirements so it's all about forecasting human resource requirements of a certain organization so ginagamit yang job analysis and job description and job specifications in determining now the duties, responsibilities and qualifications needed. So, konektado itong HR planning at saka recruiting kasi depending on the HR plans ng isang organization, they they will uh, determine if there is a shortage of manpower or there is a surplus of manpower. So, kung merong shortage Normally, ang ginagawa ng organization is to conduct recruitment. Okay, so paano ginagamit ngayon ng job analysis? So, in the recruitment, ginagamit na ngayon yung des job description and specification. Okay, they will advertise ano yung kailangan nila, sino yung kailangan nila, na tao, ano yung mga quali qualifications na kailangan nila. Okay, they will also show yung job descriptions dun sa kanilang mga job uh, job job vacancies okay dun sa kanilang mga job advertisements okay and then we will connect it to selection of course so what is the basis for selection they will determine if a certain individual match the qualifications or the skills knowledge and education needed to perform the job and they will also use this during the interview to determine if a certain individual can perform the different duties, tasks, and responsibilities. <clears throat> Another is yung compensation. Job analysis information is also essential for estimating the value and appropriate compensation for each job. So we will be having a separate discussion on that one. But ang basis kasi ng sweldo is yung qualifications and yung sa job descriptions and even on the outputs of the of that job so kung mas mataas ang qualifications na nire-require mo for that uh, for that job mas mahirap mas maraming responsibility and accountability yung trabaho mas mataas ang sahod kasi okay so, kung mas 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 mababa ang qualifications mas magaan yung kanyang uh, <coughs> responsibilities walang masyadong accountability Okay. 
So, mas mababa rin ang sahod siya. So, yun yung isa sa mga ginagamit or, uh, yeah, yun yung isa sa mga basis in providing compensation or sweldo sa mga workers. Training and development is also being used in training and development. Kasi nga, for example, yung uh, yung uh, <coughs> specifications, nakalagay doon yung specific knowledge, di ba? What if yung yung isang empleyado walang ganon? So, nagiging basis yan to uh, conduct training and development for individuals na wala pang learning or walang knowledge and skills dun sa naka-specify dun sa job description and specifications. So, another thing is yung performance appraisal. <clears throat> Di ba sa job analysis, nakalagay na dito yung performance standards. When you create job description specification, nakalagay dyan yung performance standards to be met. So, kung hindi uh, So, kung hindi na-achieve ng, ng tao, ng worker, yung uh, uh, performance standard na yan, so, nagagamit talaga ito sa performance appraisal. So, you will be using this as a basis to tell if a certain individual has a bad performance, has met the, the, the performance standard, or exceeded the performance standard. We also have here health, safety, and security. So, you can still remember doon sa ating job analysis matrix ba, nakalagay doon yung physical demands. Okay. Part of human resource management is to make it sure that every employee is working in an healthy, safe, and secured environment. So, since nakalagay na dyan yung uh, physical demands and working environment, especially kapag yan ay Uh, merong mga or should I say hazardous for example in the creation of uh, muriatic acid let me use that example so alam mo naman na medyo hazardous yan so you have to provide now safety gears safety equipments para hindi mag cause ng health damage or accident kay sa mga empleyado so nagagamit ngayon yung Uh, output ng job analysis to make it sure that uh, your employees are working in a healthy, safe, and secure environment. <clears throat> and lastly, we have here union relations. Okay. Uh, a breach of, ito kasi, di ba, yung sinabi ko kanina, yung job description, nakalagay dyan yung mga duties, responsibilities, and expected performance standards. Now, if a certain employee, okay, did not effectively perform yung kanyang duties and responsibilities that could be a ground for uh, pwede mo kasing damitin yan or maging basis para mababa yung kanyang performance appraisal. Ang nangyari kasi, kapag <clears throat> nag-conduct ka ng performance appraisal tapos dalawang beses, tatlong beses na na mababa ang kanyang performance, pwede kasing grounds yan for Uh, employee discipline, pwedeng grounds yan for employee dismissal. Okay? So, kapag nagreklamo ngayon yung empleyado kung bakit mo siya dinismiss, bakit mo siya tinanggal, bakit mo siya discipline, you could use, uh, pwede mong gamitin ngayon yung <coughs> hindi na perform ng maayos yung kanyang uh, duties and responsibilities So, pwede maging proof or legal proof ng organization niyan para i-terminate yung isang empleyado nila na hindi na meet yung performance standards na pwede rin nilang i-demote or pwede rin i-discipline. Okay? So, those are the importance or uses of job analysis and information sa mga different HR activities. Methods used in job analysis. Number one, we have here, observation. So, direct observation is used for jobs that require manual, standardized, and short job cycle activities. So, from the word observation. Okay. So, the job analyst will observe the relevant job behaviors. So, 
medyo awkward din to no kasi matapos you know observe ng job analyst ng HR specialist or ng, ng isang supervisor or manager kung ano ba yung mga trabaho na kinakailangan diyan ng isang position na yan. and also ano ba yung mga skills knowledge and abilities needed to perform the job so another thing is yung interview instead of uh, observing okay ini interview ka na lang so this is the technique used most widely in collecting data for job analysis kasi they permit the job analyst to talk face to face with job incumbents so yon yung interview another is yung questionnaire so this is the least costly method for collecting information but Alagay dito, it is the most effective way to collect large amount of information in a short period of time. Kasi yung observation at saka interview, time-consuming tong mga to. Yun sa questionnaire, you will just uh, hand in the questionnaire to the people involved or dun sa mga tao na uh, kinoconduct mo yung job analysis. Then they will just answer it. Then they will give it back to you once na tapos nila mag-answer dun sa questionnaire na yan. Okay? <clears throat> so, some of the questions being asked in the job analysis questionnaires are the following. Okay? So, nakalagay dito yung materials and equipment use, financial budgeting input, external and internal contacts, knowledge, skills, and abilities, working conditions, special duties performed less frequently, duties and percentage of time spent on each task or responsibilities work coordination physical activities decisions made and discretion training needed records and reports prepared and the last method of job analysis is yung job incumbent diary or log from the word diary uh, alam ko once in our lifetime nagkaroon naman din tayo ng diary ano yung you record yung mga ginagawa mo frequency of duties when the duties are accomplished so this technique requires the job incumbent to keep a diary or log and sometimes uh, medyo hindi ginagamit to because most individuals are not disciplined enough to keep such a diary or log <clears throat> okay just like what I've told you kanina there are two phases and outputs ng ating job analysis process number one is your job description it answers the what of the work to be performed so what the worker does is a job analysis matrix so this is the principal product of job analysis it represents a written summary of the job as an identifiable organizational unit so your job description will be showing you the different tasks duties and responsibilities involved in that job and then another output of job analysis is your job specification mm -hmm. it answers the who yan yun naman ang sinasagot ng job specification it answers the who should qualify to perform a job it's a written explanation of the knowledge skills abilities traits and other characteristics KSAO necessary for effective performance given job so ano yung mga knowledge what are specific education required meron bang licenses meron nga pang dapat ipasa ng board exams okay dun sa trabaho na yan what are skills okay abilities and other traits okay. so let us breakdown kung ano ba ang components ng job description so a job description may contain the following <clears throat> job identification job summary essential functions and duties job specifications working conditions and physical environment and sometimes nilalagay din dyan yung tinatawag na disclaimers and approvals Okay, when we are uh, referring to, when we refer to identification, 
is the first part of the job description in which nakalagay dito yung mga job title, reporting relationships, departments, location, the date of uh, the date of the analysis if it's available. Okay. So yun yung mga component ng identification. And the second comprise of the general summary. This is the concise statement of the general responsibilities and components that make the job different from others. Okay. So nakalagay din dito na yung general summary it is a 30 words or less that describes the essence of the job. So parang summary lang talaga. And then we have here now yung breakdown ngayon ng mga different activities which is the essential function and duties. So this is now the typical job description list. Nakalagay na dito yung mga major tasks, duties, and responsibilities to be performed. <clears throat> and then we have here the job specifications. The next portion of the job description gives you now the qualifications needed to perform the job satisfactorily. The job specifications typically are stated as knowledge, skills, and abilities. They may also uh, provide you the education and experience required and the physical requirements or working conditions. Then we have here the disclaimer and approvals. So again, the final section on manager description contains approval signatures by appropriate managers and a legal disclaimer. The legal disclaimer allows employees to change employees' job duties or request employees to perform duties not listed so that job description is not viewed as a contract. Okay, so ang job description hindi contract yan kasi nga pwede kasi yung magbago yan now and then, di ba? tulad ng mga sinabi ko kanina ng mga prime reasons why we conduct job analysis. Okay? So, let me show you an example of a job description and specification. So, nakalagay dito ngayon yung ito yung title tatawag natin. And yung job description job specification. But, uh, to give you uh, a more detailed Sample job description and job specification. Nakalagay dito yung job title, yung job code. So, ito ngayon yung tinatawag natin na job identification. Okay. And then we have here the general summary. Diba? Napaka konti lang yung nakalagay dyan. So, we have here now the essential duties and responsibilities. Okay. And then we have here the Tawag dito, job specifications. We have here now the required knowledge, skills, and abilities. And then we have here education and experience. The physical requirements. And even the working conditions. And yung tinatawag natin na disclaimers and approvals, nakalagay din dito. Okay? So that is an example of job description and specification na output, main output ng job analysis. So, next we have here yung, can you still remember the three steps in job organization and information? Job analysis, job design, and we have job evaluation. Job design is the process of defining how work will be performed and what tasks will be required in a given job. It is concerned with changing, simplifying, enlarging, enriching, or otherwise making a jobs such that the effort of each worker fit together better with other jobs. Okay. So we have to remember that when, when, when we create a job, we have to make it sure that this job is motivating, challenging, okay, and enriching. So, hindi lang uh, basta-basta maglagay ka na lang dyan ng, oh, ito yung mga tasks na gagawin mo, ha? ito yung mga trabaho. Okay? We have to make it sure that it's also motivating. How do we make it sure that uh, a job is motivating? So, let's look into the different 
characteristics of a motivating job. So we have here number one, merong dapat variety of skills na nagagamit dun sa activity na yan. Hindi yung paulit-ulit na lang. Okay, na minsan nakakaboring na rin. Okay, kapag if you are performing a job na paulit-ulit lang, na konting skills lang yung nagagamit mo. Okay, so you must offer skill variety wherein this is a degree to which the job requires a variety of different activities in carrying out the work and it is also involves the use of a number of uh, individual skills and talents okay number two task identity important rin to na malaman ng mga empleyado na yung ginagawa nila na trabaho fits to the goals and aspirations of the organization. So, nakalagay dyan the degree to which the completion of a whole and identifiable piece of work that is doing a job from beginning to end with a visible outcome. Okay? So, it's more of uh, making a job that has an impact. So, para siyang piece ng isang puzzle. Kapag wala yun, hindi mo mabubuo yung overall puzzle. Okay. So, you have to make it sure that a certain job okay, is identifiable okay, from the beginning to end with a visible outcome. So, na, nakikita ngayon ng mga workers na yung trabaho niya ay merong impact dun sa production na or operation ng kanilang organization. The number three is yung task significance. So it has a substantial impact on the lives of the work or work of other people, whether in the immediate organization or in the external environment. Okay. Kasi imagine mo kapag yung trabaho, walang significance, walang impact. Yeah. Would you be motivated to perform the job? I don't think so. Kung ako, kung ako yun, hindi ako hindi ko nagagawin yung trabaho na yan kasi wala rin silbi. Okay? So, kapag nagka-create tayo ng job, we have to make it sure that this job has a substantial impact. So, kung wala namang impact, ba't mo pa nilalagay? Tanggalin mo na lang. Number four, we have here, autonomy. Degree to which the job provides substantial freedom independence and discretion to the individual in scheduling the work and in determining the procedures to be used in carrying it out. Autonomy, ito yung uh, level of freedom. Okay? Hindi yung uh, lahat ng gagawin mo, kailangan mo pang ipagpaalam sa supervisor mo. Lahat ng gagawin mo, kailangan tinitignan ng supervisor. Wala man lang level of independence and discretion. Hmm. Yeah, para ka ng robot na wala kang sariling isip na kung ano ang prinognap, prinogram sa'yo, yun yung gagawin mo. Okay? Would you like to work? Or would you like to have a job na lahat ng gagawin mo, sinabi lahat ng supervisor, na palagi kang pinapanood, sinusupervise sa paggawa ng trabaho na yan. Okay? So, parang para sa akin, ha, demotivating yung ganun na type of job. Okay? So, pag nag-create tayo, ng, nag-design tayo ng trabaho, you make sure that you provide na totally naman na uh, total freedom naman kasi meron naman tayong mga tiyatawag na performance standards. Hindi naman pwede yung bahala kalat na didan. Naman. Okay? But at least, meron ding uh, level of freedom, independence, and discretion para i-perform ng workers yung kanilang trabaho. And then, lastly, we have here feedback. Ano ba itong feedback na to? The degree to which carrying out the activities required by the job results in the individuals obtaining direct and clear information about the effectiveness of his or her performance. Okay? So, you have to provide feedback also to the worker nagtatrabaho para malaman niya if there's uh, <clears throat> something to improve, something to develop. Okay? Kapag ma 
And also, para makita niya kung yung kanyang ginagawa ay relevant ba, nakakatulong ba. And kapag meron siyang mga mistake, at least as early as often, nalilesen na yung maging errors niya in the future kapag nag-provide ka ng immediate feedback. Okay? <clears throat> okay, let's look into this diagram. Let's look on this on this side. Okay? Sa left side. So, if there are few skills needed to perform the job, work is a small part of the whole. There is a minor impact on others. Decisions are being made by others. And difficult to see effectiveness. Nagkakaroon ng less motivation ang ating mga workers. So, what do you mean if there is less motivation in performing your task? Simple lamang yari dyan. It might be they will not meet the performance standards or Anong mag- ano bang magkakaroon ng mga errors, nagkakaroon sila ng mga mistakes, hindi maayos yung kanilang trabaho. Okay, but when we look on the right side of the diagram, okay, if uh, there is a variety of skills, whole piece of work is completed, the job has major impact on others, there is also freedom to make decisions, and yung effectiveness is readily apparent, because the manager is providing feedback of good performance, the employee or the worker will be more motivated to perform the, the job. Mm. So, yun, yung uh, kailangan i-provide or i-consider if you are designing jobs. Okay. Techniques in job design. Techniques of job design. So we have here, number one, job simplification. The job is simplified or specialized. A given job is divided into small subparts and each part is assigned to one individual employee. Now, ang nangyari kasi minsan, kapag masyado namang marami yung trabaho, o oh, diba masyadong marami yung duties and responsibilities, there is a lot of tasks to be performed. What would happen to a certain employee? Though variety of skills nagawa niya, nagawa natin, nasunod natin. Okay? Pero kapag masyadong marami at hindi na kaya ng tao, nag, it will result into job burnout. Job burnout. Kawawa yung empleyado. Nagkakasakit na siya kasi ang daming trabaho. Hindi na nakakain ng maayos. Palagi nag-overtime. Okay? Now, overwork yung isang individual. Therefore, it would lead into okay, yung demotivation and sometimes it will lead into and uh, not meeting the performance standards. So, hindi na siya nagiging productive or effective in the performance of his or her work. So, one of the ways to resolve the situation is to simplify it. Job simplification. So you are now dividing the tasks and responsibilities. Okay. Pwede mong i-share yan sa ibang tao or mag-hire kayo ng bago para ma-divide naman yung kanyang workload. <clears throat> Number two, we have here job rotation. Okay. Job rotation implies systematic movement of employees from one job to another. Okay. Sabi mo na, Movement of employees, it's not the job that rotates, it's the employee. <laughs> From the word job rotation, kasi minsan ang, ang notion dyan is yung trabaho yung nag-rotate. But it's the employee who take part in performing other or different jobs, which enriches his skills, experiences, and ability to perform different jobs. Okay, job rotation. Kasi minsan, yung sinabi ko nga, uh, kapag yung trabaho ginagawa mo ng matagal, Minsan nakaka-boring din, di ba? And one way to enhance yung skills and one way also to develop new experiences for employees para mas maging motivated sila is through job rotation. <clears throat> Another is yung job enlargement. It means expanding the scope of the job. Many tasks and duties are aggregated and assigned to a single job. Ito naman yung kabaligtaran ng job simplification. Okay? So, 
yung job simplification masyadong maraming duties tapos kailangan mo siyang i-divide okay but here in job enlargement napaka konti for example napaka konti ng uh, trabaho wala ka nang ginagawa mas marami pa yung ideal moment or idle time mas marami yung time na nakatunga ka wala kang ginagawa okay kasi nga ang simple simple ng trabaho mo na tapos mo na uh, two hours eh pang four hours sana okay so minsan nakaka-boring din yung walang ginagawa correct <coughs> so one way also to make the job more mot- uh, and one way also to make the job motivating is to use job enlargement so dadagdagan mo siya ng duties ng responsibilities meron kang mga dadagdag na mga tasks and number four we have here job enrichment it means making the job rich in its content so that employee will get more satisfaction while performing that job it means upgrading responsibility scope and challenge Okay. So dadagdagan mo siya ng mga duties na challenging. Okay. And then lastly we have here pwede ring mag-offer ng flexible working schedules. Okay. Ano ba tong flexible working schedules? So it is a way in which organization can give employees some say in how their work is structured is to offer flexible work schedule. From the word Okay, so from the word flexible. Okay. So flexible. So you will give them some allowances and uh, freedom when and where to perform their jobs. Tell me flexible working schedules. You are giving them a chance to determine how, when, and where they will perform their jobs. Okay, yun yung tawag natin na flexible working schedules. Okay, so meron tayong mga examples dyan, yung flex time. Okay, flex time. So, ang flex time is the employee or the worker will determine kung anong oras siya papasok at kung anong oras siya aalis sa company nyo. Hmm. So, they will determine now their work hours. Okay. Ano yung pinaka-prefer nila dun sa flex time? Example, uh, if you are a kind of person na gusto mong magtrabaho ng, ng uh, early mornings, as long as you complete yung 8 hours, for example, eh, you wanted to work... Uh, from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm. Kung yun yun ang gusto mo. Mas gusto mo yung mas maaga kang pumasok, mas maaga kang matapos para ma-avoidan mo yung traffic. For example, pag ikaw na sa city, okay, meron din yung mga ibang tao naman na mas gusto ng late na pumapasok tapos late na umuwi. Okay, for example, they will start at 9 a.m. Then they will go home at 6 or 7 p.m. So, yun tatawag natin na flex time. And they could, they could also determine yung kanilang lunch break. Okay? Depende kung ano yung gusto nila. Kung ayaw nila ng 12 to 1, mas gusto nila magtrabaho sa 12 to 1, hindi bahala silang mag-set kung yun ang gusto nila. Meron din tinatawag na job sharing. From the word itself, sharing, instead of a single person performing single job, okay, a job will be now performed by two individuals. Then we have also here compress work week. Instead of working from Monday to Friday, you compress now yung uh, mandated uh, work hours in a week into four days. For example, niya, no, Monday to Thursday, may pasok ka 7 to 6, pero Friday, wala ka na pasok, hindi ka na pumapasok. So, four day work week lang yan, hindi katulad ng dati na, or yung normal na four hours o hindi siya katulad ng dati na 5 days a week ang tatrabaho. Another example is yung uh, ito, telecommuting or distributed work na tao. Yung uh, you can determine where you work. Okay, so uh, ang tradition, di ba? Pasok ka sa office, doon ka magtrabaho. But in, doon sa distributed work, you work where you are. 
Mm-hmm. So parang tinatawag to na virtual office. Whether you are the corporate office, nasa road ka, nasa bahay ka, community office or branch, or kapag ikaw nasa cafe, restaurant, etc. Okay? So yun, distributed work. Working where you are. So parang ganito, nasa beach ka, pwede ka pa rin magtrabaho. So those are the following examples of techniques to be used in job design. And another thing to consider when you are designing is yung ergonomics. Ergonomics is the study of interface between individuals, physiology, and the characteristic of the physical work environment. Okay. So you have to make it sure that uh, you are minimizing physical strain on the worker by structuring the physical work environment around the way the human body works. Okay, so part of ergonomics is to make it sure that the organization is reducing physical fatigue, aches and pains and health complaints by providing what proper lighting, proper space, and young hours work. Okay. Kaya na, napaka-importante yung mga upuan, yung mga height ng mga tables, okay, yung uh, ilaw, yung proper ventilation. Okay, kinukonsider din yan in job design para malesen yung physical fatigue, aches and pains, and health complaints ng mga empleyan. Okay, and the last method in, or the last step in job organization and information is job evaluation. Job evaluation, dito natin determine ngayon kung magkano ang sweldo ng isang trabaho. Okay? So, from the definition, it is a systematic and orderly process of determining the worth of a job in relation to other jobs. So, it is the costing of each job attaching to its proper money value. Okay? So, ginagamit na nga natin ngayon yung uh, different information from job analysis and job design to determine magkano ang sweldo ng isang position na to. So, we will be having a separate discussion on this one. Oo, pag nasa unit 5 na tayo, compensation and benefits. So, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for listening. Next uh, topic, we will be discussing human resource planning and recruitment and selection. So, thank you for listening. God bless you.